Okay, so uh, welcome everyone to lesson eight of our intensive speaking course. Happy to see all of you guys here today. Um, yeah, so let's let's start off today with the vocabulary, which is uh, health, talking about in general feelings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, physical health, um, how, how you feel, etc. Uh, so aches and pains. In general, just the word ache is very good. Ache is like talking about. Um, some kind of pain. Ache is a direct synonym for pain, and you can actually use this for writing as well. This is a, a just great word. Um, so yeah, ache. Ache is a synonym for pain. Uh, um, next is to be a bit off color. This is kind of British and also kind of Southern American. This basically means to feel a little bit ill, to feel a little bit ill. And it's, it's usually, it has to do, it's like a, it's idiomatic language. It has to do with like the color of your skin. So it's like, if your skin is too white, then you are feeling too ill or I guess too, too bright, not necessarily white. That's a little bit racist. Uh, next is to be at death's door. Uh, so this is informal and honestly, you can use this in a lot of situations, especially like if you're trying to exaggerate and it means like about to die, like so ill that you are almost at, you know, the door of death. Yeah. It makes sense. So it's like, yeah, very ill. Uh, to be on the mend means to be getting better, to be like recovering after you were sick. Uh, mend comes from the word uh, to mend, and it basically means to fix something. So you can mend a broken relationship. You can mend a broken heart. You can mend something, something. Uh, so mend is also a pretty good word by itself. Yeah. Uh, to be over the worst. So this is this is not just about health. This can be talking about different things. For example, you can talk about, um, some kind of like, say you have, uh, whew, there's a lot, there's a lot of situations. Um, I can't think of an example. <laughs> ah, uh, for example, you are like hiking, right? You're, you're in the mountains, you're hiking and there is a part of the road that is like much more difficult. So when you finish that part of the road, you can say, we are over the worst. Uh, so this can be used about that or this can be used about health. Like whenever you are sick, for example, coronavirus, like the first two weeks are the most difficult. So then once that's finished, you can say, oh, we're, we're over the worst. Uh, yeah. Next one is to be under the weather. I think everyone and their, and their mother knows this. Uh, it's, it's a very popular phrase. It just basically means to feel sick. It's a British phrase. Not a lot of people say this nowadays, I feel like. I feel like it's a, it's a bit old. Um, yeah. To be under the weather. Yeah. Uh, next is a blocked nose. So this is what we use whenever you're talking about like a nose that you cannot breathe with. Uh, I think that kind of makes sense. It's it's like blocked. Uh, so yeah, that's called a blocked nose. An example sentence would be, um, I was under the weather recently. I had a blocked nose and a sore throat. By the way, let's actually write that down unless it's already here. Sore throat. Yeah, it is. Sore throat. Uh, sore throat is basically when you have an inflammation. The word inflammation is actually also very good, by the way. Uh, just in general, uh, something that I recommend is like when you're learning this vocabulary, learn it in a sentence, but also learn all of the vocabulary that's like in the examples, in the explanations. So for example, the word authorized. That's a good word. You should learn that. Attending, if you don't know that word, that's a, that's a good word. All of these words, uh, it's like just you can choose all of them and they are all good for speaking all of them even the explanations uh yeah so blocked nose is like when your nose can't breathe and sore throat is when your throat hurts uh next is to catch a cold so this is to get a cold basically uh, catch is another word for get next is a checkup um check up with a dash uh this is whenever you are getting looked at by a doctor or a doctor doctor seeing whether you're you know gonna die or not basically next is cuts and bruises uh, you know, cuts is like, you know, like a cut, like, like a line with blood coming out of it. And bruises is like when someone hits you and you have like blue, I guess you could say, um, that's called, that's called a bruise. Um, also an, another, another kind of idiom that's kind of interesting, um, to be, oh, to be, God, to be black and blue. Uh, so black and blue has to do with like the color of bruises. So if you get into a fight, you can say that like after the fight, your whole, you're completely covered in bruises. You can say, oh, I'm, I'm black and blue. Like you were beat up so bad that now you are, you know, covered in bruises. That's called black and blue. Uh, yeah. Uh, feel poorly. I don't know. I've never seen this one before. Yeah. 
To go down with a cold. Um, to go down with is another another very good way to say uh, to become ill, basically. You can say to catch or you can say to get down with. Uh, to go down with, sorry. That's, that's a very also good synonym. Awesome one. To go private. Um, this one can be used for different situations. In general, the, wor the word go is very, very versatile. You can see it in a lot of different situations. Uh, but in this case, you're talking about choosing a private hospital instead of a public hospital. Um, yeah, you, you, also you, you see the collocation to go public as well. That's also very popular, but that has a different meaning. Uh, in general, the word go can be used with a, in a lot of situations. If you want to like boost your um, vocab score, Google go collocations. Like collocations with the word go are uh, very good. And there's a lot of them, like a very big amount. Uh, let's move on to have a filling. Uh, which is also similar to the pronunciation lesson today, but yeah. Uh, to have a filling means basically to get one of your teeth repaired. Fill means to like have material put inside of it. So a filling is like, I think, whenever they make a hole in your tooth and then they put in a bunch of dentist material. I don't know, I'm not a dentist. Next is to have a tooth out. This means to get your tooth removed. Uh, you know, like, that's, yeah, to have a tooth out. Next is a heavy cold. Uh, this is a bad cold. This one makes sense. Uh, heavy can also be used uh, with the word case. So for example, I have a heavy case of the coronavirus. It doesn't necessarily have to be about the cold, but if you are saying coronavirus, you cannot say, I have a heavy coronavirus. That's strange. That's like a, like a big coronavirus, like on top of your head. That's kind of illogical. Uh, it's better to say a heavy case of, no, 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 no. That also works. Yeah. Let's move on to make an appointment. Uh, whenever you're using the word appointment, you want to say to make. Uh, you cannot say to create an appointment. That's 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 a bit strange to make an appointment. Uh, next is to make a speedy recovery. Speedy is a very good synonym for uh, like collocation with the word recovery. It means to recover quickly, basically. Yeah. Um, you cannot say speedy mending. Just I'll say that right off the bat. Yeah. Oh, another phrase that I say actually all the time, right off the bat. That means right away. You should learn this as well. This is a great word. It's um, I say it all the time. It basically means immediately, right away. It's a synonym for immediately. And uh, it is informal though, so I wouldn't recommend using it for writing. It sounds a bit strange. It's better to use it for speaking. And like for example, if if you're like if you're talking about something, um, and you want to give several examples, you can say like so. Uh, for example. Um, Do you think that we should use less cars? Right off the bat, I want to say that I own three cars, uh, and so maybe I'm not the best person to answer this question, but I think we should not use less cars. Uh, basically, right off the bat means like immediately, like right away or beforehand, some, something like that. It's kind of like in the middle. Yeah. Uh, next is to phone in sick. Uh, phone in means to call. Uh, and phone in sick means you are not going to be going to work because you're sick. And like you're calling and you're sick at the same time, which means you're phoning in sick. I guess that's how it works. Uh, next is prescription charges. Prescription is um, an interesting word. Prescription is like uh, the medicine that a doctor tells you to take, basically. That's what that's called. Uh, and prescription charges, charge is like when somebody takes money for something. So prescription charges is like the money that is taken because a doctor told you to take some medicine. Next is to pull a muscle. So if you are like an athlete and you're running and you can feel like your um, calf, I'm actually going to write that down. Oh, that's an interesting word. Calf. Calf is like, like, like here's your foot, right? And here, here's your leg. This part right here is the calf. It's, it's kind of difficult to explain. Just, just Google it, calf. Um, but basically to pull a muscle, like if you're running and you can feel that part of your leg like hurting, you probably pulled it too much. And now it's like, it hurts basically. Yeah. You can see by my genius explanations that I was actually a doctor in my past life. Uh, yeah. Next is a runny nose. This does not mean that your nose is running away. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it, it means that there's stuff coming out of your nose, like liquid. Um, this is another synonym of, sorry, this is another example or like reason for, for being sick. Um, another symptom of being sick. I actually didn't write that down. Symptom. Symptom is like, uh, I think it's the same as in other languages probably, but symptom basically means how do you know that you're sick? Like what's happening? What's going on? Yeah. 
Uh, and last one is a chesty cough. Uh, I'm going to re remove that. Nobody cares. Shut up, chesty cough. Perfect. So uh, that's it for the vocab part of today. Let's get to the pronunciation part. I'm going to say the words, and y'all should should repeat them after me. Let's go through these one time. Aches and pains. To be a bit off color. To be at death's door. To be on the mend. To be over the worst. To be under the weather. A blocked nose. To catch a cold. A checkup. Cuts and bruises. To be black and blue. To go down with a cold. To go private. To have a filling. To have a tooth out. A heavy cold. To make an appointment. To make a speedy recovery. Right off the bat. I'll say that one again. Right off the bat. To phone in sick. Prescription charges. I'll say that one again because prescription is quite difficult. Prescription charges. To pull a muscle. Keep in mind, this is read as S, like a long S. So it's to pull a muscle. Calf. Symptom. A runny nose. A sore throat. So, perfect. Uh, that's it for the vocab part of today. Now I'm going to be... Uh, do 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 do. I'm going to be answering some questions to do with this. So let's get to that. Um, <clears throat> uh, do 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 do. Okay. Uh, do you do any sport? Um, currently, I am not participating in any sports because I am working full time and I am completely filled on my schedule. Um, but usually whenever I'm more free, I do biking, which can sometimes lead to, uh, cuts and bruises. Uh, and sometimes if I bike for too long, it can even become aches and pains, which, uh, is not very fun. Um, one time I biked all the way to Angren, uh, from Tashkent, which is around a hundred kilometers. But by the end, I felt like I was at death's door. So I'm not sure I would ever do that again. Okay, uh, so that's that's the answer. Uh, that was a little bit long, but I tried to use a little bit more uh, vocabulary. Uh, yeah. Is there anything you are particularly afraid of? Um, well, when I'm at the doctor and getting a checkup, I'm really scared of, um, of, of having the doctor tell me that I am down with a cold or some other disease that would have me need to take shots. I'm very scared of syringes and different kinds of uh, sharp objects. Uh, so whenever I make an appointment, I try to find the doctors that I know will not do anything rash. Uh, and if I am sick, um, I make sure to only go private so that uh, I have control over what doctors I um, talk to. So that's, that's an answer for part one. Now let's move on to part three. What costs, uh, no, sorry. Do women pay more attention to their health than men? That's interesting. Um, I think it depends. I feel like uh, it's really about how much bravado a person has. I feel like most often when men are under the weather, they only start treating themselves whenever they are over the worst. Uh, whenever they finish all of the, um, whenever all of the most dangerous symptoms are over, only then do they start treating themselves. Uh, whereas women are on the mend as soon as they get sick because they recognize that they are going to be affected by, um, by whatever sickness uh, they they caught, 
And so um, I think that as a whole, uh, that's a lot smarter than, than what men do. But of course, I can't speak for every single man. I mostly speak for myself. Um, I think that in terms of dentists, um, I think that uh, women and men pay equal attention to getting fillings on time and having their teeth out uh, because I feel like teeth are as important for both genders, are equally important for both genders. Okay. Um, and let's do one last question for part three. In your experience, are people too quick to take time off work when they're ill? Uh, I can say for myself that sometimes when I'm really tired of work, I will just say that I'm sick, even though I'm not really sick. And I feel like uh, saying you're sick without getting a proper checkup is a little bit... Um, uh, what's the word? Sorry, I forgot. Uh, it's not very good for the employer uh, financially. Uh, but to be honest, I don't really care. I feel like um, if I need to recover from an illness, even if it's very small or if the illness is not uh, very life-threatening, I feel like I have the right to call in sick as much as I want. Uh, and in any case, um, the company should be able to see whether there's any prescription charges if they're paying for the insurance. Um, and in this case, they should know whether or not uh, the person who called in sick is actually sick or not. Um, yeah, cool. So uh, that's it for these questions. They are, are a bit tough. They, these questions are a little bit difficult. Using this vocabulary can be a bit hard. Uh, but it's very good to know for sure. And uh, one more thing is that there's some questions that are like outside of this topic where you could use this. Uh, for example, sport, you could use a lot of these. Uh, you could use a lot of these like at, at the beginning um, of, of the test. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, uh, there's like a lot of topics that these go into. So yeah, uh, let's get to the topic topic of today, which is going to be about pronunciation. And we're going to talk about uh, long and short vowels. This is another thing that I noticed Uzbek students have a lot of mistakes with. And uh, let's just talk about the differences. Let's talk about how to see what what's where and like so that you actually understand what all this is. Uh, so there are three main types of vowels. Uh, well, I, I, as you guys know, there's consonants and vowels. Consonants are sounds like uh, B, C, D, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N. All, all the sounds that are not vowels. Vowels are A, E, I, O, U. The five uh, vowels, I guess. Yeah, I was going to say sounds, but all of them are sounds. Um, there's two types. There's long and short vowels. And we're going to talk about long vowels because they are a little bit more tricky to deal with, I think. Just in general, you have to kind of understand the difference, but these are kind of a bit more tricky. Um, there's also a third type called diphthongs, which we're going to go over either next lesson or another lesson. Uh, just so you know, so you get like a, like a quick um, refresher, a diphthong is a, is a vowel sound that goes from one vowel to another. For example, um, uh, one second, let me Google it just to be sure. Where is it? Uh, for example, the word day, day, a, 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 e. It goes from, uh, from, from, from a to e, a. So those kinds of words are called diphthongs, and that's already a completely different type. Um, but these two, long vowels and short vowels, uh, they are also very important. So um, the first thing is long vowels are when you say the vowel's name. So for example, the letter A, right? Um, whenever you have this in a word, uh, you... That's actually it. That's Ah, uh, late, mate, day. That's strange. Uh, anyway, yeah, so the, um, basically, usually the way it looks is like this. Um, yeah, wait, I just realized that is a different. Okay, well, in any case, uh, basically, uh, this is when you say the way that you say it in the alphabet. You say the word the same as in the alphabet. So, like, you, know, you say A, B, C, D. This is late, A. It sounds the same. Uh, same for E, so A, B, C, D, E, eat, meat. And the same for all of them. Might, uh, oats, moat, uh, mute, blue. 
So the, uh, they are the same as in the alphabet. Uh, and then one more thing that you should know is you have a long vowel whenever the uh, whenever there's a single consonant and it's followed by an e. So, uh, for example, uh, plain. So you say because there's an e at the end, there's a single consonant right here. If there was two consonants, it would be different. Um, and there's an e at the end. This becomes a long vowel. Uh, if you notice, right, you remove the e. This becomes plan. Uh, when you have the e, it becomes plain. A a versus a plan plain. Uh, yeah. Uh, same for for bite, for example, bite bit, bite bit. So yeah, um, that is called the silent e rule. As you guys know, you don't actually say the e never. So it's not it's not rope. It's rope. It's it's an it's a it's a long o. Uh, if this was not there, it would be rop. Right. That kind of makes sense. So yeah, uh, another thing is there are words that end with v e and o n e. Uh, and ICE uh, that are long. So, for example, uh, dive, uh, dove, drive, drove, five, gave. So, all, all of these words in general, uh, they are all long as well. Yes. That's it? Okay, cool. Uh, yes. And also, here are some more. Yeah. So, just in general, this list is going to be very helpful for you. Uh, these are the most common words, and, and these are the ones that you're going to say. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's move on to do some practice. I think this one kind of makes sense. Uh, learn to recognize these words. I'm actually going to underline them for you guys. Uh, this right here. Uh, this right here. And this right here. I italicized it. Okay. And also italicized this. Uh, okay. So, no, it's from here. Above. Perfect. So yeah, uh, just learn to recognize these words and that's it. Let's do some practice. I want you to say it with me. Uh, first word, then second word. It's going to be long vowel, short vowel. So this is the same. Everything is the same apart from the length of the vowel. Uh, I think this, this is going to be kind of logical. So let's get to it. Uh, we're going to say the first three from each. So not all of them. So one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So let's get to it. Back, bake. Snack, snake. Fad, fade. Can, cane. Plan, plane. Tap, tape. Uh, bed, bead, Ben, bean, men, mean, bet, beat, met, meet, pet, peat, lick, like, hid, hide, slid, slide, fin, fine, Shin, shine. Bit, bite. Cub, cube. Tub, tube. Hug, huge. Cut, cute. Flutter, flute. Mutter, mute. So that's it. Uh, simple and easy. Uh, I hope this one kind of makes sense. Uh, this one is mainly about just repetition and understanding. That's the main thing. Uh, but overall, I don't, I don't think this is too complex. So let's get to the feedback section. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me look at the people that are getting their feedback today. Okay. Let's start with you, uh, Aziza with the hashtag, hashtag Aziza, hashtag Aziza, cool Aziza, cause she has a hashtag. Uh, please raise your hand so I can see you. Aziza, Aziza, Aziza. Hi. How are you? Uh, if you can hear me, please say hi. Hello, teacher. What's up? Uh, so, um, for today, would you like a part one or a part three? Um, maybe part one. Okay, perfect. Give me a minute. 
Is that a bird? Is that a bird? Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. No. That's cute. That's awesome. Please send me a picture of your bird later in in the chats. Uh, okay. So here's your question. Um, so do you I'm have ready. what? I'm ready. Okay. Here's your question. Do you have any relatives that you really like? Yes. Um, nearly all of them I like. I really like my relatives. And um, such as my husband and my two uh, sons, and um, of course my uh, there, of course my parents also, and my siblings. I have two siblings also, and my brother. Why so, do you like them? Usually, I uh, usually I. Um, Uh, I responsible for and uh, I pay attention to their um, healthy life and um, so uh, they're very um, well. Okay, uh, so let, let me give you a, little, a bit of feedback. Uh, in general, not bad, right? Like I can see that you're you're good at speaking. You don't make too many grammar mistakes. Uh, what you should work on is trying to think about things to say, right? So, like for example, you just started listing all of your relatives. That doesn't get you any points for anything because you're just saying and 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 that's it. Like there's no, no yeah. variance. Right? So what you should do is, for example, you started talking about uh, helping them whenever they're sick, right? Paying attention to their healthy life. Uh, that's a little bit like grammatically incorrect. You should have said something like paying attention, uh, sorry, making sure that they are healthy, for example. Um, mm -hmm. But then you could expand and you could add more information. Like, for example, you could say, uh, when my husband and children are under the weather, I bring them medicine that they need uh, and I make sure that they're not feeling any aches and pains. So for example, you could have used vocab from this lesson. You could have used vocab from another lesson. So yeah, it's just about of thinking of ideas, right? Do you kind of get it? Uh -huh. Try to like incorporate and use the vocabulary that we're using in each lesson. Uh, like whenever I give you guys these questions, they are connected to the vocabulary. So you have a chance to try to use the vocabulary from this lesson. If you remember, when I'm giving my example answers, I always use the vocab from this lesson because I want to show you guys that it's possible. The questions that I ask you are related to this topic so that you can you can do that. Anyway, yeah, thank you so much, Aziza. I hope you have a great day. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. See you. All right. Let's move on to the next person. Give me one moment. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. <clears throat> okay, the next person is going to be... The next person is going to be... Uh, one moment. Sorry about that. Okay. Uh, Ferdafs. Sir, Mr. Ferdafs, if you are here, please raise your hand. Ferdafs with black hearts. Are you the same guy or are you someone different? I feel like I've seen you before. Why are you black hearts now? I don't know which Ferdafs this is. I'm a little bit confused. Uh, okay. Uh, let's do this. Uh, Ugiloy. Ugiloy. Ogiloy. Okay, here we go. Ogiloy, hi. Please say hi so I know that you hear me. Good evening, teacher. Yo, what's up? How you doing? Uh, so, are you ready for your question? Would you like a part one or a part three? Part one. Perfect. Here, let me let me do it. Let me do it. Uh, do you do any sports? Yes, I like playing different type of sports, including jogging, playing chess, and playing tennis. What I like most about them is just jogging because they are uh, because it's very interesting and uh, helpful for me. Sorry, I oh, have God. internet problem. No, no, sorry, it's not your problem. Oh God! Oh, God. Ah. <laughs> okay, that was.
was terrible. I apologize. Um, uh, <laughs> technology. Okay. Um, here, let me ask you another question because that was terrible. Is there anything that you are afraid of? I'm afraid of different type of insects like snakes and spiders. Um, I'm really afraid of spiders. Even whenever I see spider at my home, I feel so. I feel. I. I always feel a great sense of um, what. Like, I. I'm scared of spiders. Spiders. Okay. Um, so that was, that was a good answer, but I feel like how you could make it better. For example, you could start talking about, um, more than just, I, I feel scared. You could talk about like a situation in your life when there was a spider, you could talk about, uh, how they make you feel more deeply. So for example, it's like, uh, you could say that when I see a spider, I, uh, my skin starts crawling. That's a very good, you should write that down. That's a good way to describe um, being afraid. Uh, when I see a spider, my skin starts crawling or, um, I jump out of my seat and I try to kill the spider or I stop everything I'm doing and I try to run away. Like I try to explain what happens or give a personal example, something like that. Uh, because you just like said it and then that's it. Or for example, you could talk about spiders and then also different insects more than just spiders. Uh, so try to make your answer a little bit more deep rather than just surface level. That's the main feedback. Everything else is pretty much fine. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Let's move on to the next person. The next person is going to be. Okay. Uh, the next person is going to be. Uh, Java here. Oh, Java here. Java here. If you're here, raise your hand. Java here. You should have good internet now. Uh, last time I said that I would ask you, uh, but you didn't. You didn't have good internet last time. Java here. Java. Java here. Java here. Java here. Java here didn't come to the lesson. God damn it. All right. Next person is uh, Muhabat Han Ganiva. Maybe. 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 Okay, next person is Zarin, uh, Zarina Samidinova. I already asked you. Okay, uh, next, um, did I? Yeah, I did. Okay, next person is Ibrahim John. Ibrahim John. Ibrahim John. Um, I don't think you are Ibrahim John, Ibrahim. Man, this is really confusing. Why? Oh, okay. Uh, yesterday on the 19th. No, sorry. On the on the 18th, I was supposed to ask you, Noza. Noza, if you can hear me, please say hi. Noza. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, yes. Hello. Okay. Hello. Would you like a part one or a part three? Yes, I'm ready. Hello. Part, part one or part three? Hello, hello. Part part one mm. or part three? Uh, part three, maybe. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, what costs are involved when you are ill in your country? Costs. So, um, right now I'm living in Moscow. Uh, and the um, health prices are very high, rather than in Uzbekistan. Um, thanks God that, um, <clears throat> um, my husband is, um, diplomat and, uh, we have medical insurance. Um, uh, so, uh, when I, um, catch any kind of, some, some kind of, um, illness, then, um, so I can, easily use my medical insurance and, uh, and then different types of treatments. Okay. Awesome. Very nice. Uh, I, I like your answer. You could have like, I saw there was a little bit of hesitation there. I feel like you were like a bit lost for a second. Uh, so good job, like catching yourself and continuing your answer. Um, 
I would say that medical insurance is a great collocation, uh, but you made a couple like grammatical mistakes. Like for example, you said, <laughs> there are a health price very high. And also oh. you didn't use a lot of like um, academic vocab, which you could have used. Uh, for example, like um, you could have said something about how high the price is. Uh, so you could have said something like, uh, here's a very good word, by the way, exorbitant. Exorbitant means like way too high, incredibly high. So you could have said like here in Moscow, the prices are exorbitantly high. Whereas mm -hmm. in Uzbekistan, the prices are very low. It's practically free, something like that. So uh, like practically free, exorbitantly high. You could have used these to explain how it is instead of just saying rather than in Uzbekistan. So that was like mm -hmm. you kind of you didn't use as much vocab as you could have. Otherwise, good job, but try to work on like vocab plus um, a little bit of grammar. Yeah. Um, can I ask um, any words for, for my pronunciation? Because my teacher always says that I'm speaking like Chinese people in English. Uh, this is a problem that a lot of Uzbek people share. In general, you guys sound like people that <laughs> you guys sounds a bit strange. Uh, but what I have learned is that people that are coming from the Uzbek language, the problems that you have are like a mix between like Indian and Chinese. Like mm -hmm. if you mix them, then you have like Uzbek pronunciation. And so, um, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, I mean, listen, the, the thing is, it's true. I'm not saying you guys are like a mix of, you know, Indian and Chinese. I'm just saying like the, the kinds of grammatical problems are like, 50% Chinese, 50% Indian, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't notice anything too strange in your pronunciation. Your pronunciation was like, it, it was pretty good. It was, it was fine. It was fine. Thanks, yeah, no worries. Have a good Bye. day. All right. See you. <laughs> you know what they say. All right. Okay. Is that in the same Did I ask you yesterday? Please tell me. Because I think I did. Did I? No, no, you didn't. No, I, I I asked you in your channel, in your private channel, but not in the course. Ah, aha, uh -huh. you mean in the, during the live. Perfect. Awesome. Okay, then, hi, nice to see you because I, I remember your name. Yeah, okay, hi. so would you like a part one or a part three? Part three. All right, let's do it. Here's a question. Um, do women pay more attention to their health than men? Well, uh... Well, I'm not a good, uh, well, well, I'm not a good, oh, well, I think uh, women are good at uh, almost everything because women always try to, uh, women always try to pay attention uh, to their health and they are looking uh, rather than men because men are, you know, I think men are indifferent. So if if they get sick, you know, so bad they they get you know prescription medicine but uh prescriptive medicine but so yeah i think me, uh, i think women are much more you know um, uh attentive okay uh i would say that you have like there's one thing that you should kind of fix, right? You have really good vocab. Like you're saying, for example, indifferent, attentive. That's like really nice. That's like chef's kiss. But um, what you're not doing is your sentences are not impactful. It's like you're not saying as much as you could be saying. For example, in your sentence, right, you could have said something like, um, that's why I believe that men are indifferent uh, whereas women are more attentive. Like if you use this in one sentence, you would have more time to use different kinds of vocab. Uh, so it's like you use one sentence, you use the word indifference, one sentence, you use the word attentive. If you combine them into one sentence, that one sentence would be a lot better for your marks than, than, than just like having a couple words here and there. Uh, I don't know. I feel like you could just be adding more by having better grammatical structures. I feel like that's, that's the main thing. Um, but yeah, great, uh, great vocab. Your grammar is pretty good. I didn't notice any mistakes. Try to speak a little bit faster. I think that's the main thing. Speak a little bit faster. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Whew. Have a good day. All right. Let's move on to the next person. 
Adam Karia, I can see you, but you've been holding your hand up for like two hours. Please say hi so I know that you can hear me. Hello. Yo, uh, are, where are you? Can you say hi again? Hello. Hello. Is there somebody speaking in the background? Hi. Are you at a restaurant right now? Are you like at a cafe? Because I cannot hear you. It sounds like there's like 50 people speaking in the background. Hello? <laughs> okay, uh, Adam, I'm going to ask you tomorrow because I think you're somewhere like in public. Next time, please be like at home or somewhere because it sounds like there's people there. Okay. Um, all right, next person is going to be uh do 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 shohruh karimov shohruh karimov ah there we go mr shohruh karimov hello please say hi so i know that you can hear me Jabo here is back as well. Okay, Joe here. I'm going to unmute you, but don't say anything yet. Uh, okay. Shohro Karimov, please say hi. Hello. Would you like a part one or a part three? Let's do part one. Part one? Okay, here is your question. Um, do you think it's important for you to eat healthy food? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let, let me say that again. Um, is it important for you to eat healthy food? Uh, you can say that again, just, you know, uh, health comes first in our life. It's just way more important than other stuff, like having a money, let's say, because if we get a sick or if you are under the weather, let's say, we almost are not able to do any other stuff in our life. So, and health is linked to his eating a uh, healthy meat, let's say. So in this case, uh, we are supposed to eat some healthy, like, uh, meals. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. Did you say healthy meat the first time or healthy meal? <laughs> yeah, I said meat. Yeah, I, I, I was... <laughs> Confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'm not sure whether healthy meat is the best collocation, but I mean it's interesting. I will say, I'll say that it's interesting. I've not heard this before. Uh, yeah, I like. It, it, I feel like you need to work a little bit more on speaking naturally. You're like 50% of the way there. You're speaking very informal. Like it sounds great. Uh, for example, you said other stuff in our lives lives i think you said uh like that's that's a great way to say it stuff in our lives like perfect that is the way that native speakers say it use the word stuff more use the word thing more you're doing great but at the beginning you kind of confused me because you said you can say that again like it's used in different situations if if the question um uh well, I like for example right, what I think it means uh, I agree with you, just I learned in this way. This. Yes, it, it does mean yeah. that. Let me explain how to use the phrase, you can say that again. So for example, uh -huh. if I ask you, if I ask you, uh, you like sport, don't you? So don't you is like a confirmation. I'm asking you, um, I'm asking you to agree with me. That's it. So basically, I already think that your answer is yes. Then you can say, you can say that again. Um, but in other situations, you can say that again. No, nobody says that. Like, it, it just sounds strange because you can say that again. If you don't have the right intonation, it sounds like you are asking me to repeat it. If you say, you can say that again, it sounds like a question. It sounds like a question because it is a question. If you say, you can say that again with the intonation going up, that's a question. <laughs> so it's like I hear it and I think, what? Confused? If you watch the video later, you can see that my face is confused. So... Uh, basically, what I'm saying is, if it's a confirmation question, then you can say you can say that again. But otherwise, 
try not to say that. It's not a very good way to say it. Yeah, so that's it. Mainly just try to work on um uh do 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 try to work on just in general sounding a bit more coherent because like it's 50% informal and you sound great and then 50% you're making these kind of mistakes that make it sound strange. So yeah, work on that. Thank you so much. That was that was awesome. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Okay, let's move on to the next person. Java here. Please say hi so that I know that you have better internet. Java here. No. <laughs> <laughs> Joe here, can you hear me? Unmute yourself. Don't un unmute yourself. You're muted right now. I can't hear you. <laughs> Joe here. <laughs> why does this always happen? Why? Joe here, why? Okay. I'm, I'm going to keep you unmuted. Just whenever your internet starts working. Why does this always happen? It's really loud. Okay. Why? All right, uh, let's move on to the next person. Um, Ibrahim John. Okay, Ibrahim, I'm going to let you speak. Please say hi. Ibrahim. Oh. Are you Ibrahim John? Be honest with me. Are oh. you? No, no, no. I'm Ibrahim. I'm Ibrahim. Alex. I'm Ibrahim. Ibrahim. Not Ibrahim John. Just no. Just... Okay. Did I? I think I. 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 Um. No, no, you didn't ask. You didn't ask. You didn't give feedback, any feedback. Okay, but I, I told you that you're getting your feedback today, right? Or no, I didn't. Uh, but I asked it. I mean, I wrote, I, I mean, I texted you, but uh, you just say to me, I give feedback, uh, your order is coming. Yeah? Do you get me <laughs> what I'm saying? You, you message me every single lesson. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Okay, wait. Yeah. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I swear. Uh, Okay, you know what? I'm gonna ask you today. I don't know where you are in the order, but I'm gonna ask you today. Uh, okay, okay, do you want a part one or a part three? Uh, do your best. <laughs> what part do you two, mean? part one. <laughs> okay. A any question? <laughs> I have any question. Please. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, here's a question. This is part one. Do you pay attention to public information about health? Uh. Well, I think so. It is uh, not important in, in, in our life that is public uh, like uh, uh, any information that about health. It is not like uh, it is so strange for in our life that is for uh, pay attention for kind of situation or uh, yes. Uh, but in terms of uh, it is so important uh, how, uh, for instance, uh, public trans trans uh, transmission. It is important and also. Is about health and when we get sick and if you if we didn't know any information about how can we like trade uh, like or how can we on be on demand in our life and we should know I mean we should like uh, know about any information about uh, this one okay um, so first of all uh, in general pretty good you need to work a little bit on your grammar like for example you said we need to work on this one uh, this is already a, a pronoun and it's like, you are already talking about whatever you want to talk yeah. about. So there's no reason to say this one. You can just say about this. Um, yeah. uh, but I always like to say, uh, this one, you know, I mean, this one, like this yeah. word, it is so like, it is my, it's my tongue. Like it just, it just, it's this like word, a parasite you know? word. Yeah. 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 Try not yeah. to say this one. That's kind of a mistake. Um, but I always like other... to avoid this word. I will like try yes, to avoid. Try to avoid. That's that's a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Let me let me continue. Uh, another thing is, uh, I think you should try to enunciate your words a little bit more. I feel like you're making these kinds of like simple mistakes because you're not you're, you're speaking without necessarily thinking about every single word you're saying. So try to speak a little bit slower and like uh, every single word you say. The way I'm speaking right now, you can hear every single syllable and every single letter. You can see my mouth is completely moving a lot. So you should try to speak like this a little bit more so that uh, your speech is more correct, basically. Um, yeah, say every single letter. That's kind of what I'm saying. Try not to speak so quickly. Speak a little bit slower. Yeah, and I think then you would be better. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. All right, so let's move on to the next person. Uh, today we also have... Uh, what do you do? Okay, 
Uh, Dilnoza. Dilnoza. There's a lot of Dilnozas in this world. Uh, Dilnoza, please raise your hand. Just Dilnoza with nothing else in her name. Just Dilnoza. Dilnoza. Hello? Dilnoza? Dilnoza? Okay, she's not here. Uh, let's move on to the next person. Uh, Shomurova Husnora. I feel like I've said your name before, so I don't know, like, uh, please raise your hand. Shomurova Husnora. Oh, here, here. Hello. Have I asked you before? Please say hi if you can hear me. Have I asked you before or not? Hi. No, last lesson I said that I had an, an electricity in my area, so that's why I wanted to answer next lesson, like, I mean, this tomorrow. Yes, I remember. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, so uh, here is your question. Would you like part one or part three? The, the, yeah. Both of them. Okay. Uh, your question is going to be part three. In your experience, are people too quick to take time off of work when they're ill? Well, if I had to think about it, I would say yes. Actually, in my country, I feel like I saw a lot of people who, um, if they feel, if they uh, go down with a cold, uh, they actually first uh, take off their work because uh, it's very essential for their health and also, um, especially, the first thing is actually their health than other things, uh, because if a person uh, healthy and it will be okay and he or she can do a lot of stuffs during his work, his or her work, and also I can, yeah, that's it. Okay, um, so here's what I'm seeing. You're speaking pretty well, but you're making a little bit too many grammatical mistakes. For example, um, take off their work. How? Like, like here's their work, it's their clothes, and they take off their work? No. Like, no. you know, take take time off of their work, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean. Yeah. If a person healthy, so you need a verb there, if a person is healthy. So yeah. you're just making grammatical mistakes here and there. And another thing is you're overusing the same... Um, like linking words and also the same uh, discourse markers. So for example, especially and actually, you use those I think a little bit too many times. Um, so try to find synonyms for those, number one, like synonyms for them. For example, instead of actually, you could say in fact. Um, and another thing is I just, I feel like, I don't know, think about your grammar a little bit more, try to say sentences a little bit more carefully. Um, in general, like you said, if I had to think about, that was good. Like that's a that's a good way to start. Um, I guess I don't even know. Just grammar. Work on your grammar. Your fluency is fine. Everything else is pretty good. Uh, just yeah. you're using too many of the same discourse markers, and also. Um... Can you give me band score? I would say six. Like. Yeah. Uh, 5.56, something like that. I mean, this is part one. Um, so I'm, I can't give you like a full mark off of this, off of one question, but yeah. I think 5.5, almost six. Uh, just work on those discourse markers. Like it's, you're using a lot of very good vocab, but you're using it wrong, right? That's kind of the thing because you're making mm -hmm. grammatical mistakes. Uh, not as in you're making like mistakes with the vocab. I think you understand what the vocab means, but you're making grammar mistakes. So yeah, thank you. All right. Have a good day. Okay, next person is going to be next person. Uh, da, 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 do, 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 do. Next person is next person is next person is Java here. Can you hear me? Please, please, Java here. Please turn on your microphone. Java here. No, that's so sad. That's so sad. Every single lesson this happens. He's going to be here until the end of the course. We're going to see him every single day. All right, uh, Dilnoza, if she's here. Okay, let's go through the list of people who I have asked, but they're not here. Um, da, 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 da. 
Okay. First of all, first of all, first of all, Guliora and Lola. Uh, Aziza, I asked you. I found you, Aziza. Uh, Marjona Safarova. Um, Rushona. Uh, Rushona? Okay. Um, Kamila Jabarova. Shahzoda. And also Ahmedova. Maybe it's one person, Shahzoda Ahmedova, I don't know. Um, next is Muhabbat Han Ganiva. Uh, Muhabbat Han Ganiva. All these people, please raise your hand if you hear your name. Um, Alham Kariyev, you're going to get your lesson on the 22nd. So not, not tomorrow. I said tomorrow. On the 22nd, you're going to get your audio. I think also Jamshid on the 22nd because I don't know where he is. Sorry, not Jamshid. Uh, Java here. Um, okay. Dilnoza. 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 Dilnoza is not here. Okay. These people are not coming to the goddamn lessons. Disrespectful. I'm so sad. I'm gonna, I'm gonna miss them. I'm gonna miss them. I really am. Okay. Uh, so yeah, perfect. So I think that's about it for today. Um, yeah, everybody who's here, uh, you guys, my offline lecture is uh, offline masterclass is this Sunday. So tomorrow is the last day that you could pay for it. I'll be really excited to see you guys there. You're getting a discount, 150,000 for offline, uh, 60,000 for online. Uh, the online lecture, the online version, I also really recommend it. You're going to be playing games. You're going to be learning. If you want to get your speaking up to maximum, I recommend you to buy at least the online, but also the offline would be really good. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for participating and I hope you have a great day. That's it for today. Bye. Remember to participate in the offline masterclass. Bye everyone.